Hello, and welcome to the Tutorial Toolbox. My name is Tobias, and this is Unity 101, episode 13. Today, we are going to do spawning. And what spawning is, is basically, we are going to write a script that can, while the game is running, place a game object in the game. So, for example, we can create another enemy if the enemy dies. And how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, let's create an empty game object. Let's place it over here. Nope. Over here. Let's add a new script and call it Spawner. Spawning in things is actually pretty simple. The way you do it is with a method called instantiate. The instantiate method takes some parameters and the first parameter is the object that you wish to instantiate or spawn. So for that we need a public game object spawn and so we want to spawn the spawn and where do we then the next one is a vector 3 position where we want to spawn the spawn and that would be transform that position and then a quaternion uh, rotation quaternion is the way that unity uses rotations and quaternion dot identity is the common one so now we just need to add in a spawn and there are multiple things uh, ways you could do this you could either use prefabs which are basically some game objects that you have placed in your assets folder that can then be used again and again and again and again and they will always be the same or we can just use something already in the hierarchy Let's call this spawner. Whoops. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm my nose is a little bit uh Yeah. <laughs> so let's uh, pull in the enemy. Let's play the game. And as you can see the other enemy spawned just as we wanted him to. They both follow us. If we click our player, we are losing health. So everything is working as it should. And then we go game over. So, but we only wanted to spawn when the other enemy is dead. So how do we do this? Well, we can check to see if there is any enemy in the game.
So we check if we uh, if there isn't anything. And in that case, we want to spawn. I don't need this start thing. We want to spawn our our spawnable uh, object or enemy. So let's just kill this enemy. Alright, so that didn't work. We're trying to, of course. So, it works with the part that we want to find if there's a game object with the tag enemy, but then we try to instantiate the spawn, but that doesn't exist anymore because we delete the enemy. So what we could do is we could create a folder, at least I believe we can, and drag the enemy in here. Yep, we can do that. And then we this makes a prefab of the enemy with the animator, the transform, the script, the capsule, everything. So for example, here we have a prefab of the soldier. But this is just a model, it's actually not a prefab, it's, it's just a model, it's a .fbx model. And then inside our prefabs, we have our enemy.prefab, which contains everything about our enemy. So instead of using this enemy, because we want to use something that we can always access, we are going to use this in a prefab. Just to make sure that it's right. And let's try again. And there you go, another enemy spawned. Let's see if we can kill him before he kills us. No, we couldn't. But yeah, so that is how you spawn in game objects. And as far as I know, you can also spawn in other things. For example, rigid bodies or, or something. And um, and what this is used for, it's primarily it's used. It can be used for two things. Uh, one thing it is used for is for procedural generation, which basically means that you don't build the game inside the Unity editor or as a model you build the game from tiny tiles or pieces uh, of an area and then you generate them with an al algorithm that makes it look however you want it to look and then you instantiate those game objects in the right places and it's also used to for example spawn in bullets or something for example if you want to make a an asteroid game you know the uh, asteroids game you have this ship that fires the bullets you would spawn in those bullets or something projectiles whatever everything that isn't in the game when it starts you can put it in there whenever you want using instantiate and of course we can also do this game object as game object so basically what this does is that not only do we instantiate it but we also instantaneously or in the same moment create a game object called enemy that we can manipulate and basically this 
enemy here is the reference is a reference to the enemy that we are going to spawn so or let's call it spawn to be more accurate and we can of course manipulate that however we want with all the normal things we can do with a game object we can add a component we can get a component we can edit the transform the renderer the rigid body particle system everything so in reality we don't need the enemy prefab we could just use the model and then give him the enemy script the capsule collider the rigid body the animator but it's just easier uh, to do it like this instead of having to set up all the scripts inside the spawner but yeah as I said you can you can spawn anything you can also spawn just a cube so we have a cube here and uh, let's make it a prefab tell the spawner to spawn the cube instead And then we have, damn, then we have the cube spawned and of course the cube is intact with the enemy so it's just going to keep spawning cubes in the same place until somebody is tagged with the tag enemy and since the cube isn't then that will take forever so we could tag it with the enemy or, or we could use some other kind of way to figure out what, uh, when to spawn but yeah, you can spawn in any, anything, and this makes a lot of things much, much easier. It means that you don't have to have things in your game that you don't need all the time. You can just simply spawn them in whenever you need them, and uh, destroy them whenever you don't. This also makes it so performance is a little bit better if you have a, like a giant game and you have lots lots of things that you don't need all the time but you have them lying around because you didn't know you can just only use them when you need them so they take up space in the world and, and stuff like that but yeah so uh, that's been it for this tutorial thank you guys for watching it's been a blast don't forget to subscribe if you wish to continue following along with our series this series is actually, well, it's not over, but right now I don't have any more tutorials to put in this series um, because the next couple of Unity, uh, well, the next Unity tutorials I'll be doing is going to be the game ones where we create a game from scratch. So if you wish to see that, don't forget to subscribe so you can be in it uh, with us from the start but yeah um, as I said this series is gonna be put on hold well it's, it's not going to be updated as frequently until I find something I feel is worth mentioning of course if you have some questions or some tutorials you'd like to see please send us a private message or or write it in the description and I'll be happy to look at it and see what I can do but yeah thank you guys for watching I'll see you in the next tutorial that 